The next family we consider in our reactions is that of the aspartate family. The aspartate family, as its name suggests, all involve aspartate. And aspartate can actually trace its roots back one further molecule, and that's oxaloacetate, as you can see here. All family members in this uh, uh, metabolic pathway come from aspartate. Aspartate can actually also be made from one of them, so there's a reverse reaction that can produce aspartate, as we will see. There are numerous ways that lead to aspartate, so I'm only going to talk about a couple of them. The, one of the ways, and one of the more common ways in which um, aspartate can be made is by the process of transamination that we've already talked about. Here's one sample transamination, and there are many different transaminations that can produce uh, aspartate. One starts with glutamate and oxaloacetate, glutamate being the amino acid, that is the source of the amine, oxaloacetate being the alpha keto acid, which is the source of the oxygen. The product of that transamination, the glutamate becomes alpha ketoglutarate, and the oxaloacetate becomes aspartate. The amine has come from the glutamate onto the aspartate, the oxygen has come from the oxaloacetate and goes and becomes the alpha ketoglutarate. Another way of making aspartate is by hydrolysis. This is a reversal of the synthesis of asparagine in a way. Now we'll see later, it's not the exact reversal of the synthesis of aspar asparagine. Asparagine can be cleaved using water in a hydrolysis reaction to produce aspartate, and there's that ammonium ion again. Ammonia is a toxic compound. If the cell needs aspartate, they're gonna do this reaction. Or if the cell is breaking down asparagine, it's got too much asparagine, it'll do this reaction. But that ammonium ion has to be gobbled up somewhere or it's gonna cause a problem. The third way of making aspartate involves the urea cycle. The urea cycle involves the cleavage of arginosuccinate with AMP to make aspartate and citrullyl AMP. Now this is kind of a complicated reaction that I won't go into here, but will be discussed later in another one of these lectures in the urea cycle. As I note, it's a reversal of a reaction that occurs normally in the urea cycle. So normally the reaction in the forward direction of the urea cycle goes upwards. The synthesis of asparagine occurs from aspartic acid in a fairly simple fashion. We can see here that if we start with aspartate and glutamate and we add ATP, we can create asparagine and alpha ketoglutarate plus AMP. Now this is a transamination, but this is a transamination that's a little bit different in the sense that it's requiring additional energy to do that. Why does that happen? Well, the reason that that happens is we're not putting the amine onto the alpha keto group. We're actually putting the amine onto the carboxamide group at the end of asparagine. That requires energy. And because that requires so much energy, we see ATP becoming AMP. When we see that happen, we know there's a lot of energy involved. When that happens, it means that this reaction, even though it's drawn in a reversible fashion, isn't very practical in the reverse direction. The enzyme catalyzing this reaction is asparagine synthetase. It's energetically costly and essentially not reversible. So the other way, of course, of making aspartate, and the much more common way of making aspartate from asparagine, was by the breakdown of asparagine. That involved the use of water, production of aspartate, and the enzyme catalyzing that is known as asparaginase. This is the most common way that asparagine is broken down, and the most common way that aspartate is produced from asparagine. We produce the ammonium ion in this process, remember that's toxic, and it will have to be gobbled up in another reaction.